is May 31st, 2024. Again, today. <clears throat> Riff raff, start to follow me. People run in their mouth because they have nothing better to do in their life. And they're sick and pathetic. Helping out an extortion group. Us as U.S. citizens, we normally don't treat people this way. We find it repulsive when an occult or a drug cartel is trying to extort money out of people and trying to get a victim in trouble, running a big scam on them. We usually have enough common sense and a brain cell in our head to be angry. And are people just this bored or this so miserable within their self that they have to hurt other people trying to extort money? I sent it in to the FBI, the NSA, the CIA. The, uh, I'm going to, uh, the NSA, you can go on the Inspector General hotline. Mm -hmm. I sent all this in. Do we understand? If they want the agent that told on me to apostolic church of Barberton for, he called me. Okay. I called the hotline. If you even start at September 3rd to 6th of 18, okay, where Dave blurts out that him and Jack had this plan since March because I wouldn't give up everything willingly. It was all planned. Okay? I go out and get a job. I get hired at Advanced America as an assistant manager. Annie, the DM, doesn't know where to put me. Goes to send me to Twinsburg. Then she sends me to Streetsboro. Go have my interview. I'm back at my house and I'm at the end of the driveway. We only had three cameras on the outside of our house. One to the back porch, front porch, inside yard. Nothing to the end of the driveway. No, it was a real long driveway. <clears throat> okay. They can't see me. I have nothing to me on my phone. And I'm talking to my mom and it's raining. I'm trying to get off the phone. And he calls me, Karen, why won't you go in the house? I'm like, are you home? He's like, no. I'm at work. I'm like, there's no one around. He had freaks hiding in the woods. I have a picture of a freak in the woods. Michelle Keggy next to uh, 128 Lennox said she had, there was men watching my house before I moved out. She'd see him pull up and watch my house and could leave and come back. He had the cartel watching me before we left. Okay. <sighs> and uh, he, I keep telling him that's not funny. There's no one around. I live 10 miles out of town. And I, I, I want to know why you won't go in the house. I have people stalking me. Do you know how legal that is? Uh, Annie beeps in. And she wants to know what's my problem. Trying to tell me I was rude to somebody I never meet, met. They had somebody go up and impersonate me at the other store. It cost me the job. Next day, I go up there, and I have them verify it wasn't me, and they try to give it back, and it's ruined by them. <clears throat> okay? And um, then I was talking to Terry. She still doesn't know. I know. Uh, I needed to taper with her permission of seeing the guy that tried to kidnap me. Okay? She was my witness. So I never told her. Where she said she was watching some lady's kid for $10 an hour. Well, uh, I thought, is that the woman that cost me the job? I'll find out if that Dave is cheating. It's probably her, and I'll listen. Where she left me on speaker on the counter. She go and she forgot to hang up. And I got, guess who was on the phone with? You're kidding. I almost tricked her into coming down to prayer where those two guys would show up and take care of her. You know they pay people to know where she's at. I could have used the money. It's not like anybody in the church would ever help her. Other ladies like, well, that's about as bad as Kaylee. She used another minister because Keith charged too much money. And then she said, well, you know who's in the meeting to hire those two men to kill her? was Keith Bishop, Strange, and Ron. And they took up 25 grand to hire those men to kill her. Because Ron wants her dad. Because she got mouth here as a kid died. And I gasped. And I hung up. Strange as lie of covering up his son's adultery. Of, oh, you were faking over the last four years. Had nothing to do with them. They just made up a reason to kill people.
I had nothing to do with her kid's traffic accident. And I had went through six to 10 surgeries and my muscles locked up, went to the wrong doctors, <clears throat> falsely diagnosed, wrong medications, swelled from my feet to my brain, my heart valves enlarged, many heart attacks, thyroid, adrenal gland shut down, gained 150 pounds in um, a year and a half. So swollen, I can't, my, I had to wear braces because my legs would pop out of place and canes to steady myself. And I'm dying. And they're lying that I have a brain tumors and I need part of my brain removed. And there was nothing wrong with me. They chemically induced it. And it took another doctor to tell on them that they were known for falsely diagnosing. Huh? Ripping off people's insurance. Using it as a checking account that they can just drain. Getting kickbacks from the drug companies from $200 to $1,000. And sharing with their associates and their friends, all doing the same thing. Making people sick so they have to keep coming back and then doing unnecessary procedures. You're not the first one. Turn them in the state so they pull their license. Huh? And get an attorney and sue them. They ought to thank God every day I didn't sue them. Okay? It's documented medical malpractice and documented medication error. Got with Dr. Eli, got on pain medicine, muscle relaxers. And within the first month, I lost 30 pounds. Second month, uh, I'm pulling myself around stores and malls in so much pain, even on fentanyl. I ended up in the hospital. And by the end of the second, third month, that stopped. Thyroid's working, adrenal glands working, brain swelling's gone. My heart is damaged from those doctors. My valves are enlarged and it flutters every once in a while. They were causing many heart attacks and still didn't pull me off like some of the officers would watch me there's no way those doctors didn't know they weren't killing her with everything shutting down and everything swelling up and they still didn't pull it off of her and it pulled that medicine off of her and it took another doctor to tell them by the third month end of second month third month i could drive a car pull myself up and down streets mall stores only thing was wrong with me was my muscles locked up from all the surgeries everything was a lie and chemically induced by a bunch of crackpots. I started in November of 2002 with Dr. Eli. By April, I'm almost well. I went from a 24 in November to a 16 in April. That's why I got like three arms. <clears throat> okay. May 3rd, 2003. My whole family's home. Now I'm almost well. Everybody's been cheering me on at church. We see you pulling out yourself up and down streets, small stores. You're going to beat it. Well, they talk about remission. It can't happen fast enough. You'll beat it on your own. May 3rd, 2003, Brian Laney shows up and tells us that, you know, well, we knew there was a church baseball game, but everybody stayed at home that day and said uh, Phil was a lead car and a bunch of them were late and he blew through a stop sign. Nobody could believe that he didn't even try to stop right into a semi and killed him and Tyler. May 3rd, 2003. In July of 2003, I got what? Finished getting well. Nothing to do with nothing. In November of 2003, my sister Linda is married to Tim, Strange's son. And she was out one day and caught him with Kate. So she, when he leaves, she started following, find out, you know, what's going on. He was cheating. She came up to me. Uh, I was following him again. I got caught. I think they thought it was you. I'm sorry. Be careful. Well, Strange, that was a Wednesday night. By Sunday morning, he made up the lie. Oh, you were faking through the last four years. You can't fake that shit. I have scars all over me. MRI reports showing the swelling. Blood work showing everything shut down. Uh, even that I have a um, <clears throat> report how my valves uh, enlarged in my heart. Copy of the fentanyl patches. And a false diagnosis of brain tumors and other things. There was nothing wrong with me. For years after I got well, I had my asthma inhaler and my estrogen from where I had a hysterectomy hormone replacement. That was it. Because there was nothing wrong with me. Now, it's six months after a traffic accident I had nothing to do with. It takes a moron to believe, oh, you were faking through the last four years. Can the you realize how morbidly pathetic and sick and disgusting it is for the biggest to want attention out of that? 
He could have told people I was a stripper, a bank robber, anything. It had nothing to do with her father killing her kid. And them trying to manipulate it into their path for them to get attention and to control people. Sick and disgusting. Using, like this one guy, his one son, um, he died as a toddler. Um, he lived on a farm. There was a pond across the way. Somebody wasn't watching the toddler, and they found him floating in the pond. He was dead. He said, you know, I could never imagine using my dead son's name to harm anybody in his memory of hurting people. I find these people disgusting, using their dead son's name to harm people. Start looking at them disgusting and pathetic that they're using their family's tragedy to further their call to kill people. Like they said, they made up a reason to kill her. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this. Okay. Now, I had Terry's phone call on like 17th or 18th of 18th, September 17th or 18th of 2018. Okay. Sarah worked at sales. Her old manager, a uh, blonde lady, older blonde lady and a girl with brown hair and brown eyes went to work with Katie Ashcroft and Oak. Okay. Jewelry store. I'd known those ladies for years. Sarah still worked at sales. They all three came up to me where I had four attempts on my life that Katie was telling people in the mall it was them trying to kill me. Okay. Call police or detective. She can't tell people that. Okay. Then Dave tried to claim it was a vivid dream later on, but he was very much awake. Grabs me at 3 o'clock in the morning on September 20th of 2018. I love you, but I love her more. I'm so sorry, Karen. You have to die for her. I hired a man to slit your throat, stab you in the heart. You'll bleed out, Karen. And he's grabbing me, squeezing me, rubbing my head, rubbing his beard into my face, pushing my head into the bed. You have to die for us to get everything. I'm so sorry, Karen. But if you try to run for her, I got a man to put a bullet in you. For 30 minutes, he squeezed me, hugged me, and kissed me. and kept saying it and pushing my head into the bed. I could barely. I was afraid if I moved, he'd kill me with his own bare hands. Okay. I'm freaking out. I called John and he's like, Mom. I said, what's going on, John? He's like, I don't know, Mom. I would have punched him. I said, I was afraid he's going to kill me. September 21st of 18. I'm freaking out. I had eight, lost 18 pounds. Okay. On the sixth day up there, somebody had kicked our door into the wall when we were out. That's when they're supposed to put up their stocking cameras. By the second week, I go out to mow the lawn, and I almost pass out in front of the neighbor. I have marks all over me. I get, my heart's racing through my neck. And I'm like, hey, God, the male nurse next door runs over. I'm a nurse. Can I help you? I don't know what's wrong with me. I'll mow your lawn for you. I don't have money to pay you. Okay. And he talk, finally talks me into letting him mow my lawn. Everybody knew it happened. There was times I'd go out and work in the yard. I'd come in, wash my hands, make something to eat and drink. Go in and use the bathroom, wash my hands better, come out, take a drink in the room, go dizzy and black. Wake up with more marks. I have been throwing up. I lost 18 pounds before I called the FBI. Wake up in the morning with injection marks, handprints embedded in my arm. I'm like, did I squeeze myself and the fingerprints are bigger than the well water looked like poop water before we got the water treatment system. I always cooked with bottled water or uh, and only drank bottled water because it was so dirty. And I thought just washing it, it was killing me. I had a personal infection so swollen that I could hardly pee. And I was blaming the well water. I thought it was, maybe it was giving me cancer. And I kept going to all my family physicians. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know where all these marks came from. Did you fall? No, maybe you're coming in it. Give me iron pills. Muscle relaxers. My muscles hurt. Do you know how bad it hurts to be beat that bad? Giant bruises everywhere. Severely, and pills and creams for a personal infection. Uh, stuff for headaches and throwing up. I lost 18 pounds. Lost another 70 after I called the FBI. Okay. I never seen or talked to anybody.
the only two officers I talked to were uh, August 8th of 18 at midnight. I had a light in the security system. I called 911 and um, the officers that came out, they were silly. They said, ma'am, it looks like an alien orb or an angry spirit. And I'm like, sir, it's hot out there. And would you like some water? He said, uh, we're not allowed to go to the bathroom and do it. It's like, I'll let you use the bathroom. I thought he was dehydrated, right? Because who talks like that? Alien orb or angry spirit? Then he's like, ma'am, you know how we handle it in the country? You open the door, buy a big dog, open the door, and let the dog handle it. Someone comes on your property. He didn't want bothered. You would have pulled that stunt in Perry Township in Maslin. They would have said, ma'am, you're home alone, and somebody's that close to your house is going to try to break in. Because otherwise they'd be on the road. Call us and we'll be right back. But they didn't want to bother about that. It was a guy with a flashlight. If you look at it in the dark, it's a guy with a flashlight. It's probably one of those idiots coming over to rape me. It's that sick, and he's trying to tell me to buy a dog. Okay? I only had repair guys, insulation guys, and my family. I never had anybody in my home. I never even had my neighbors in my home. I knew nothing. Okay? September 3rd is 6. Uh, that's when Dave Bragg said him and Jack had a plan since mom. Okay. Now we're going up to September 21st of 18. I'm freaking out, realizing it had been them. Now they're bragging they've been doing it. How stupid am I where I was followed and ran to Dave, insisted I went a certain way. It was Savannah's Facebook friend following me. Um, Kaylee's hint, do you know about Savannah? I know of her, but I don't know her. She's a little 18-year-old kid, sits with her parents. Well, what do you mean? I don't know. Why do I? Her family went to that church a long time ago. They come visit. I know of her, but I don't know her. What do you mean you don't know her? Why would I? Well, you know her old boyfriend, the baby daddy of that little girl? It's really big and drunk. What does that have to do with anything? You have the drug cartel involved. That's what Dave was saying. Oh, 18 year old kid at 60. She should have been ill, you like my grandpa. Okay. Well, September 21st, 18, I'm walking around Giant Eagle. Dave calls me, Where are you at? I'm buying something for dinner. I got a phone call to make. I'm like, Don't go. Please don't go. He hangs up. I won't answer his phone. I look up. It's not even safe for me to be here. Okay. And I get, I get a flu shot because I didn't know where I'd end up. Couldn't risk getting sick. Sit down on the bench. I'm starting to hyperventilate because I'm scared realizing it's been them. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know anybody. <sighs> I'm like, just breathe. I hear the voice. I can't believe she's here. It's the same guy that tried to kidnap me. I'm like, oh my God. He's here. I stand up and I turn my car. He comes up behind me. I stab you right here. No, if it wasn't for that security guard. I almost passed out. I was already dizzy. I had to catch my breath. I'm like, he's like, I'm going to stab her and get over it. I won't make it out for that security guard. I turn my car real quick into the bank. I want to open a account. Out in front of somebody. Pizza Hut lady comes up. I get paid to watch her. Lady, uh, the mail baker is like, lady, stay out of it. She's like, no, I get paid to watch her. He's like, lady, I mean it won't be worth it, man. And he screams at her so bad they all walk. Dave instantly calls me and I put him on hold. I've, they got my, that mail banker still slamming stuff. How dare she? Okay. They got my count over real quick. A group of people were there and I got in the middle of them and I got my car and I freaked out and drove down to Walmart 62. I got out to get gas and African American lady spit in my face, hurt her white boyfriend. So her ass me. I go in to Walmart 62 by Wood Forest. There's another tall white guy with black hair, black eyes, and I think they were contacts because he had no white in his eyes. Okay. And an eagle tattoo. That's M13. I did 
I googled uh, gang tats. They have an eagle tattoo on their neck. It's their M13 Dorper Doll. What a shame. And kept staring at me like a dead animal. Got away from that freak. Right. Um, and I, um, got home to use, I come to the end of the driveway. My girlfriend's rich and powerful. Her family owns a place. You won't be able to withstand. Looked at him, I said, it's not a communist country. Nobody owns a place. He didn't want me to call the cops on him. He wanted me to be too afraid of him. I took a day and I prayed. Pulling my heart out to God. I've been married 33 years. Loved him with all my heart. And here it's been him and them. Dave was the type of man who'd be good to you for a year or two. The first day he had a bad day, he beat the hell out of you. Right? That's not love, that's control. And then I called the FBI hotline. We'll have an agent call you back. The next day, the phone's ringing. They had to wreck me up so bad I couldn't wake up all the way. Wherever was the tears running down my face. I kept saying I can't. Let it go to voicemail. Woke up later, I was staggered, holding on to the wall to go to the bathroom. Holding on the wall to get something to eat. Get back in bed. And listen to the voicemail. This is agent. Da, da, da. Call me back. I can't. Okay? And I fall back to sleep. Second day, not much better. Third day, I am I made myself get up. And I'm holding, I'm sitting on the front porch. I'm holding my head. I feel drunk. I don't drink. What's wrong with me? Sign of a roofie wearing off. Amnesia drugs. Makes you sick. Okay? I got enough air on my face. I called Sarah. Okay. One of my witnesses. Boy, you witness for me. Of course, Karen. It's getting darker and scarier the way she talks about it. Right? So I go out and get a car. Put that agent's number in it from a voicemail. Make an excuse to go to the mall. Give it to her manager. And she put it in her locker. Went up to Apostolic Church of Barberton. Paul Paymer got in Dave's face. My God! I had an FBI agent <clears throat> in my office. He's right there. I walk off real quick. Dave, uh, he's screaming at Dave. How dare you bring the FBI up here with threats on her life? Women walk up. He knows she's being drugged, beaten, raped. And he said he didn't care. I have bruises all over me. I've lost 18 pounds. My personal area is so swollen, I can't hardly be. And my heart's sinking in my stomach. Is that what's going on? And I go in and I sit down. And they call up me and they say it again. He knows she's being drug beat raped and he said he didn't care. If she was going to be faking, she wasn't. And faking, she got well while that family was grieving. He didn't care what they did to her. And if she was going to insult the women, he was going to turn her back over to him. He didn't care what happened to her. Can you imagine an agent saying that? Dave comes in, let's go. We get out in the truck. You call the FBI on me? I ought to kill you myself. And he peels out and he starts punching me in the truck. He goes for a load of gun. I put my hand on it. He knocks it off. And he punches me and swerving all over the highway. And when I got home, I ran from him. I called that agent back next morning, reversed the tears. Scared out of my mind. I tell that agent on a recorded line. Someone told me, you liar. It was him. Then he confesses it was him. Okay. I tell him about um, the guy that went to knife me at Giant Eagle. Calls me a liar. Was there a camera above the bench? I don't know. It wasn't my job to know if there was a camera above the bench. It was his job to find it. Badgering laws, obstruction of justice, tampering with evidence and witnesses, Department of Justice 1729. They have to take your statement if they believe you're not and follow through. Or they go to jail. Okay. 
I tell him, I said, well, he tried to kidnap me before. Terry Coberly let me take her with her permission. She's seen the guy try to kidnap me. He's a serial killer for the Florida human trafficker. Okay? He killed my uh, one co-worker, Lori's family member, and then took Marlisa's niece. Hmm? And he's in it with the big truck guys that are grabbing people and they're all working together. That's who they were messed up with. The dark cartel. The human traffickers. The serial killers. That's who they've hired to harm me. And these stupid fucking morons. Thinking it's funny exploiting people to, and trying to extort money on them. And then society in this area, such low lives, participating in it. Would they want it done to them? Would you want it to happen to you? Okay. So, uh, I tell him he tried to kidnap me before. You liar. He said, I'll tell you what. Even if, now I went to tell him, Terry seen him. I had a witness. And he's like, I'll tell you what, even if a church person seen him, they wouldn't verify it. I've met with that family in my office that's just making up shit. Making up shit. Making up shit for people's attention. Making up shit. Had nothing to do with her father killing her kid. Trying to get pe manipulate people into doing stuff for her. Okay? The family in my office that lost her kid in the traffic accident that her father murdered? Hmm? That's just trying to help their cult get away with killing people? Them people. You had those in your office. You arrested them, right? And I've met with all those church people and I know they're all trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick and faking you got well while that family was grieving. It's like I really was sick. You liar. Was there a camera above the bench? I don't know. You either say you're lying or I'll put you in jail. Then he starts screaming again. I said, I'll put you in jail. You don't say you're lying. It's like, fine, whatever. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. He said, now I want you to say you're faking you're sick. It's ridiculous. It was a four or five year span. I got all this proof. I talked to a criminal attorney. You can't fake that shit. And he can't talk to you like that. Okay. I I said I really was sick before. And then he does. I met with that family in my office. That lost their kid in the traffic. Act. The ones that are just manipulating people. We kill people. It has nothing to do with them. But they're just wanting sympathy. And to be able to control people to kill them. Kill people they don't want around. It's killing Jezebel. Key six service about getting rid of your wife, get rid of your children, God will give you no. Takes the priest to kill Jezebel because they have no feelings. In 16. Breached it. They planned it since 16. Had to get it together. So, yeah, those people. And the church people. And I know they're trying to kill you because you were faking you were sick and faking you got well with that family who was screaming. It's like I really was sick. You liar. You, he said, I'll tell you what. I don't blame him for trying to kill you. And you need to realize what you've done. I said I really was sick. You either say it or I'll leave you there. They're going to try to kill me so. They've tried to kill me so. You say it or I'll leave you there. And I start begging this bastard for my life. Now say it or I'll leave you there. It's like fine. Just don't let him kill me. Ha 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 ha. What are you just a moment to? He told on me for calling the hotline. Everybody already knew. He told five to nine hundred people. There was over 300 at Blaylock. And they've told all kinds of people that he did say he knew I was being drunk, being raped, didn't care. Because the strange lie of faking you were sick and faking got well. And if I was supposed to have insulted their women, I didn't see their damn women. They made that up too. We live in an area of 350,000 people. I didn't go to their church. I didn't see them. So what are you talking about? Their little baby lies. And how could you feel sorry for a 40 to 60 year old woman? She insulted me. We had to have her drug me raped. We had her human trafficking exploited on the internet because she insulted me. Psycho bitch. And I didn't even see them or insult them. It's that sick. They were just acting like morons. 
He's like, why would the FBI help a person like you? It's a sworn duty. Okay. If you, yeah, because if you put strangers church in Blaylocks, he easily told five to nine hundred people. I called the FBI hotline for and talked to me. Confessed on a recorded line. Okay. He said, uh, uh, why would the FBI help a person like you? Well, they're going to try to kill me. So they've tried to kill me. So the other agent yells out, Dave's scam of retired George Pete. Like they said, uh, March, what was it? March 20th, 24, that they made up Pete. They made up everything on me to get away with this. And people fell for it and they were laughing at him. Made fun of the FBI agent John June seventh twenty three Lighthouse Tabernacle on March sixty two of how they fooled him. He fell for their stunner tapes before. Ha 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 ha. They dared the FBI to fix it July 9th, twenty three in Trinity Gospel. They have publicly mocked the FBI. They have publicly dared them to fix it. The FBI won't dare fix it after what one of their agents did. They don't think they have integrity. Got it. That a human being back to the human traffickers and a call to abuse. Now, Pete is Alex and a beer, the guy that followed around to me that is Savannah's Facebook friend, and she's Michelle. And like they said, they thought if they put a retired judge's names on it, that they'd be above the law. No man's above the law. And like a criminal attorney, Please, prosecutor's office, Dave can't hire Peter or anybody on his own. It's a right to privacy. As an occult, they didn't think as a woman I had rights. Okay. He said we could always use Pete's tape of weird with yourself. They already confessed it was a shower scene in the other room. March 1st to 3rd of 21, they said they put clips together made of porn. And then what you're describing is showering. Ha, 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 ha. She figured out what they did. May 12, 22 at noon. May 26, 22 at noon of the shower scene. Done on purpose to make it look weird. And they found a tape of them admitting a shower scene in the other room. In 18, they admitted they photoshopped all their lies. And they had drugged me and told me to say it. And they were drugging me and telling me to say all kinds of stuff in front of the police. Now, I've never had anybody in my home but my family. Repair guys, installation guys, and those two silly officers. That, um, uh, Said it looked like an alien orb or an angry spirit. I hadn't talked to anybody. Okay. He he's like, we could always use Pete's tape or weird the scam of washing in the other room, clicking and pasting. <sighs> Photoshopped. And I don't even know who the hell they're talking about. Okay? And I don't like, I don't know what you're talking about. Dave's scam. And then he's saying, well, we could use Pete something and whatever. Now, I've never talked to him. I only had marks and throwing up. They're laughing at me for my rapist. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. She don't know. I bet you're going to say you don't know about this doctor selling your information. And I, well, some other lady he was using my insurance when I first got married. It was probably a girlfriend of dates where he was probably cheating on me again. And back then, you didn't have to show ID. You could call in your insurance information. We got stuck with the co-pays, and we reported insurance fraud. And she went Harry Carey, stayed in the hospital, had procedures done, you name it. Left us, raked up all kinds of bills. Okay. And I thought, maybe it's one of hers. Find out it's just some guy impersonating a doctor, one of Savannah's Facebook friends. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. She don't know. He said, give me a real reason. Why well, tell him about my brother-in-law, Craig, that died working for our government? He's like, first of all, have you talked to any law enforcement? Why well, tell him about the two silly officers that had a light in the security system on August 8th? They told me it looked like an alien orb or an angry spirit. And I thought they were dehydrated and I offered them water. And then they told me to buy a dog and let a dog handle if someone came back on my property. You're kidding, right? I said, matter of fact, I've never even had my neighbors in my home. I don't know what you're talking about. I've only had fam family and repair guys. Is that what's going on? And then he offers to take me somewhere and leave me with no money. And then he offers me an informant program, 5000 a month for life, immunity for life for working in this case. Um, nothing legally stated against you again for working in this case. We'll always put it back as if it never happened, even when you tell. Um, 
and you'll have that money to live on. Admit to no wrongdoing, and I'll take care of everything in the end. But if you try to tell someone, I'll list you crazy, and no one will help you. He's already admitted he told everybody. I talked to a criminal attorney, police prosecutor's office. That agent don't even have enough authority to ask you to stay quiet. I said, but he already confessed he told on me. Everybody already knew it was stupid. He said, it don't matter. You can tell whoever you want, and they can't open their mouth. He was only bullying you to get away with it. First Amendment, the freedom of speech. Only a judge can put a gag order on you. He's just a higher police officer. He was only bullying you so they get away with it. He stole 335000 Tomorrow, he'll steal 340000 And if he had a living and a housing expenses and a medical card, he could have stole way over a half a million in five years. Got the idea. And 14th Amendment, you cannot see somebody's money or assets, but due process of the law. And you cannot tell people they can't, uh, you cannot withhold protection. It is illegal. First Amendment is freedom of speech. Fourth Amendment, no one can be in your home but protected like cases with statements. Police or agents do it. It is considered entrapment. Otherwise, there's uh, stocking tapes. They've hired the drug cartel to run a big drug scam. In case I didn't know. Being a smart. That's why they made fun of FBI agent John if he would actually fall for it. Lighthouse Tabernacle. They'll call it made fun of him June 7th, 23. Publicly mocked him. Stark County Sheriff's taped him. Huh? They taped all my kids defending me. Dave defending me. My grandkids defending me. Mel's kids saying they were lying for the girlfriend to get the house. And they made everything up. I was found innocent of everything at 18. That's how absurd all this is. Like they said, if she ever moves away, they'll have to tell the local police the drug cartel's running scams on people. Oh, and I'll love this. Everybody turn this in. That agent stole all that money. There was another FBI agent stole 225 from a case before he got arrested. This arrogant son of a bitch has stole it in front of people. They said he stole that on the first day. He thought he had a drugged up rape victim so drugged up she didn't know what was happening because just steal her money. He didn't like Sheriff David, Mike DeWine's cousin, if he stole your money. He stole others. He's gone too arrogant. May 20th, uh, <clears throat> May 20th, 24. I'm in the Hampton and I'm Bedmore in North Canton. I go upstairs to get coffee about 3, 305. He walks in. I heard they're doing this for Savannah of all things. And I told those people... If she was going to insult their women, I didn't care what happened to her. I found out she didn't even see him. And he's in there confessing it was him up at that church. You want the agent that told on me? Under camera and audio? And my phone's tapped from the police. One has to record every day. He confessed it was him telling that shit up at Apostolic Church of Barberton. I didn't even see those people. I didn't go, like they said, the agent didn't even think. Where would she see him? She didn't go to the church for years. I wouldn't have their phone number. I wouldn't know where they live. I have my own life, my own family, my own church. Why would I have anything to do with them? Because, see, that's where, in 2011, they were making up crazy crap when I went to Blaylock. Went over to that church maybe like three times. Now, it's from 2003 to 2011. They haven't seen me in eight years. Making up crap on me. I go in there with Dave. Okay. They said, uh, I heard you got in at with Kitty. It's like I've only said hi to her maybe two or three times in the mall when I was with Dave. Is that what's going on? They're laughing. Uh-huh. They all started laughing. I hadn't even seen her. Said nothing but hi in the mall. Get it? She started telling people Dave left me and was going out with her. I said, and we walked in Macy's. We're in the very back of Macy's. Uh... And she works down the mall. She would never know. Unless he told her. He said, uh, I said, Dave, are you going out with that girl? He said, Karen, she's pathetic. Making out that a married man would leave his wife and go out with her. I said, Dave, are you going out with her? He said, Karen, trust me, I'd rather kiss a cow's butt than that fat, ugly heifer. Well, I giggled at his mean joke. We're in the back of Macy's. By the back door. The purses are back there. She couldn't hear us down the mall, could she? And all I did is giggle at his mean joke. 
so she should know nothing unless Dave told her. All right? I went with France, out walk with France, she lives on Avis. I said, why are these people making up stuff on me? He said, well, Mary hates you. I said, how could Mary hate me? I've not seen her in eight years. She started laughing. Smiled like the Grinch that stole Christmas. Is that what's going on? I said, what's going on? You don't know? No one. Never mind. Just make an option. For people's attention, like Dave said, they're pathetic. They're pathetic. Somebody they didn't even see or talk to. Make an option on them. And then want people's sympathy. That they're being mean to them. Maybe they don't even see them. They're that mentally ill. Jim Pritchett goes to Blaylock's. He said, Karen, and I work with that brother English from over there. He tells me how you're drunk and drugs and you're wild and crazy. You come to church and you're fine. I said, stop listening to him. I haven't seen him in eight years. I said, what do you mean? I had nothing to do with those people. In 15 years, I went to two or three services with Dave to learn to find out why they're making up a shit eight years ago. From I, I hadn't seen him in eight years. And that was 2011. I didn't go back. So, <sighs> Where would I? I'm not a member of their church since 2003. It's 2018. Where would I get their phone number? Where would I know where they live? Where would I have contact with them? I didn't. It takes a moron. It takes a moron to feel sorry for them and for their pathetic made up shit. You want the agent that told on me? May 20th. 24th, 3 to 305 walks in the Hampton Inn while I'm getting coffee and confesses and they got cameras and my phone's bugged by the police and him recording. And the police will have his recording to, that uh, he was the one saying that shit. People up in Akron said we went over that church. He really did, that agent did tell people that. Well, he confesses. December 14th, 23, 4.45 p.m. They said that was him walking out of um, McDonald's. Yelling out that he was in it with Dave and stole my money. Told Dave he set me up and stole my money. He's stealing from victims and from the government. Turn him in. Turn him in. 